good afternoon dear students i hope you are all well and safe uh, last time we finished the univariate case okay uh, we covered all uh, the probability distribution that we want to study the last one was Cauchy distribution i hope you understood the material if you have any questions you can email me um, now we are going to move to the case where we have more than one random variable whether discrete or continuous and that's what's called joint probability distributions uh, in this case more than one variable can be defined for a given random experiment or over a given sample space like what if we take example one it says toss a fair a pair of fair ties or which is equivalent toss a fair die twice okay and now we are this is the experiment now we are going to we can define many random variables for example we can take x1 to be the number of dots appearing on die 1 and we define another random variable called x2 which is the number of dots appearing on die 2 also we can def define a third random variable we call it x3 and this uh, will be the sum of the dots appearing on the two tiles. <coughs> in fact you can define more for example you can define x4 which is the product of the dots appearing on die 1 and die 2 so that means we can define more than one random variable over a given sample space and we want to study all of them the behavior of all of them uh, together another example example two if we will if we select a student at random from our faculty from FIPS okay and we define x1 to be the weight of the student and x2 to be the height of the student okay so now we have two random variables you can define more you can take x3 to be the age of the student also if you are interested in the performance the academic performance of the student you can add x4 which is say the grade of the student and so on so that means we can define more than one random variable for a given experiment so that means we can talk about two random variables the three random variables ten random variables and so on we are going to start with the simple case which is the case of two random variables we call it bivariate case okay or bivariate distributions um, if you remember uh, in the univariate case what did we study if you remember for example you can talk about the cumulative distribution function We've talked about the probability mass function for discrete and probability density function for the continuous. We've talked about mean, variance, moments, moment generating function, all this. All this we are going to extend it to joint probability distributions. Okay? So all we've talked about in the univariate case, we are going to see what's the corresponding in the more general case which we call it the joint distributions okay so we will start with the, the bivariate cumulative distribution function we can call it bivariate because i am saying we'll talk about the case of two random variables or we can call it in general joint cumulative distribution function <coughs> if you remember what is the, the definition of uh, <coughs> the cumulative distribution function in the univariate case capital f of x what's the definition if you remember 
The definition is the probability that the random variable x takes values less than or equal x, where x takes values on the whole real line from minus infinity to infinity, if you remember. Now we are going to extend it to two random variables. So now, as the definition says, it says for any two random variables, x and y, defined on the same probability space, the joint, or we can call it by period, CADF, which is a cumulative distribution function, is what we will denote it by capital F, X, Y, of X and Y. So it is the same. The definition is the same. Probability. The probability that X, the random variable X, takes values less than or equal little x, and the random variable Y takes values less than or equal Y where x from minus infinity to infinity and y from minus infinity to infinity. Can you see in the definition I am saying any two random variables? I mean whether they are continuous or discrete. The definition is the same. And this is what we said in the univariate case. But the difference is in obtaining this function. If you talk about discrete random variables, then this type of probability you will obtain that you, you will get it using what summation. But if the random variables are continuous, you will use what instead integrals. So that's the only thing. But this definition is the same for uh, both random variables. Okay. What else did we talk about for the CDF? We've talked about uh, the properties of the CDF. Do you remember the properties? One of the properties was what? Huh? Capital F of X. If x goes to minus infinity, capital F of x goes to what? Zero. You remember this? But now here we have two variables. We have x and y. So now capital F of x, y will go to zero if at least one of the arguments go to minus infinity. Which means if x goes to minus infinity, this is the first one, f of negative infinity, y which is the limit as x goes to minus infinity for capital F x y is zero for all y. Okay, because y is free here. So we say for all y. Or instead, if y goes to negative infinity, this is the second line. So capital F x y, this one here, capital F x negative infinity, which is the limit that y goes to minus infinity, f of x, y, so this will give you what? Zero, but this is for all x. Or if you let both x and y go to minus infinity, can you see? x goes to minus infinity, y goes to minus infinity. So that's the limit as x goes to minus infinity and y goes to minus infinity for f of x, y, and that gives a zero. Okay? Excuse me for a minute. I'm sorry about that. Something went, uh, something went wrong here. It's fixed now. Okay. 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 So that means now, if at least one of the arguments go to negative infinity, capital F of X, Y will be zero. Okay. What else? If you remember. Hmm. 
capital F of infinity is 1. Okay. But here again you have x and y. So we have to let x goes to infinity and y goes to infinity. And in this case, capital F of x, y will be 1. Okay. Um, this is the property two. What else do you remember? Hmm. That the CDF is right continuous, right? Capital F of X Y is uh, capital F of X in the univariate case is right continuous but again our capital F here is in two variables X and Y so as the number 3 says it has to be what huh? right continuous in each argument in X and in Y remember what's the definition of right continuity that means the limit as h goes to 0 and h greater than 0 for capital F x y at x plus h and y where h goes to 0 and h greater than 0 which means h goes to 0 from the right you can instead of writing h goes to 0 and h greater than 0 you can write h goes to 0 plus which means h goes to 0 from the right so now this probability is equal to what? Huh? Is equal f of x y. That's the definition of continuity. The same for y because we said it has to be continuous in each argument. So that means you have to get the limit of capital F x y of a, a capital F x y at x and y plus h where h goes to zero and h greater than zero, which means h goes to zero from the right. Also, this probability has to equal what f of x y. So this is right continuity. Okay, what else do you remember from the properties of the CDF? Huh? If you remember, if x is a random variable and x1 is less than x2, I am talking about the univariate case. Okay, then what capital F of x1 is less than or equal capital F of x2. We call it the monotonicity property. Well, we have a similar one here, but again, we have to concentrate on x and y. So, for here says what huh? it says if x1 less than x2, okay, x1 less than x2, and y1 less than y2, then, then what? Huh? If we talk about this type of probability, probability that x greater than x1 and less than x2, y greater than y1 and less than y2 equals. And let me stop here and go to the graph, okay, to see this graphically. Now we want to locate two values of x, x1 and x2, where x1 smaller than x2. These values are these values. This is x1 and this is x2, where x1 is smaller than x2. We also have to locate y1 and y2, where y1 is smaller than y2. These values are these values. This is y1 and this is y2. Okay. Now, if I want x to lie between x1 and x2, and at the same time y lies between y1 and y2, that means you are talking about this rectangle. Right? Because here, x lies between what? x1 and x2. And y lies between what? y1 and y2. So we do care about this rectangle. So this probability statement, it says you want to calculate the probability over this rectangle. So how do we get this probability? If we do care about capital F of x, y. Capital F of x, y, by definition, as we said, in the previous slide, it is a probability <coughs> excuse me, that x is less than or equal x and y less than or equal uh, y. If you see what this property says, it says this probability equals to the first component is what? Huh? Capital F of x, y, capital F at what? x2 and y2. Where is this? Can you see now, if you look at the vertices of this rectangle, huh? 
this is x1 y1 and this is x1 y2 and this one x2 y2 and this one x2 y1 so now if i want to get f x2 y2 can you see this is x2 y2 this this vertex so where is capital f capital f will be defined on this area this one and this one if you take these borders okay so that means you are talking about all this okay the area below this dashed line and to the left of this dashed line which means all this so it includes what it includes this rectangle that we do care about it okay now how do you get this rectangle from all this you need to exclude what you need to exclude all this right all this so now we are going to exclude can you see here minus minus what capital F at what at x2 and y1 where is x2 and y1 this one right this is x2 y1 so now capital F at this point what does it mean it means x is less than x2 and y is less than what y1 so that means you are talking about all this area all this okay which has this horizontal shading okay but still you want to exclude this right this part that's why here we say minus minus what capital f at x1 y2 where is x1 y can you see here to make this point clear can you see i am using f for the joint for the joint cdf capital f and then when it comes to the marginal i use capital f also okay so that's why to differentiate both between the marginal and between the joint we use this index here so when we index it with x and y that means you are talking about what this is the function the joint ctf but here x so that means you are talking about what marginal and of course these are different different forms another way if you don't like using these indices you can use different letters for example i can drop x y here and i call it f but when it comes here i cannot use f I have to use another letter, say G or H or whatever, if you want to drop the indices. I hope you understand now what do we mean by. So let us go back to our case. So this is the definition of the joint probability mass function. Remember also in the univariate case, <coughs> we have some properties of the probability mass function. Do you remember them? Two properties. One of them says what? The probability mass function is non-negative right and the second if you sum the probability mass function over all values of x in its space then the sum has to be what one well we have similar properties here. so we say little fx y greater than or equal zero for all real pairs x y in their domain and if we sum but this time now we are going to sum over x and over what y if we sum this function over x and y we will get what one and of course we say for x y in their domain because we are assuming now that uh, two-dimensional space for x and y we denote it by r so these are just implied what is the probability we sum okay we sum the joint over what over the area we want the probability one so now if we go here so that means we are going to sum the joint pdf over the area over this area which is from what huh? for x two to three huh? x goes from two to three y goes from what one to two right. one Two, two. Now let us replace f of x, y. Okay? Or before we replace it, we can just write it uh, to be more clear. We expand these summations. Okay? You have x2 to, to 3. If I fix x at 2 and vary y, what do we get? Huh? 
2 with 1 and 2 with 2. So that means f of what? Huh? 2, 1, and 2, 2. f, 2, 1, 2, 2. And then take x equals 3 with what? Huh? Once with y equals 1 and another time with y equals 2. So that gives f of 3, 1, and f of 3, 2. But again, in our case, they all are the same. So this is 1 over 36, and this is 1 over 36, and this is 1 over 36, and this is 1 over 36. So that means now the sum is what? 4 over 36, which is 1 over 9. Okay. Now another example. It says can f of xy equals ky times 2y minus x for x equals 0 and 3 and y equals 0, 1, 2 serve as the joint probability mass function for two random variables for any value of k? Can this function be a joint probability mass function? So that means you have to verify what, huh? or to check what the two properties of the joint probability ever. So now let us write this explicitly for each pair, for each pair of x and y. So if I take x 0 and y 0 and substitute here, what do you get? Huh? F 0, y 0, you get 0. Because y is 0. 0 times anything is 0. Now, if I take x0 and y1, okay, we get this one, f0, 1. So, I replace x with 0 and y with 1, you will get 2k. And then get f0, 2, x0 and y, what, 2. Substitute here, you will get what, 8k. And also, 3, 0, you get 0, 3, 1, you get negative 3k, 3, 2, you get what, 2k. So these are all possible cases for this example. Now we do know k. So we and what are all possibilities for k? That k could be what? Huh? Positive, greater than zero, or k what? Less than zero, negative, or k zero. We don't have any other choice. So now if x is positive, if x is greater than zero, can you see this probability will be negative? Right? which is f31, so f31 will be negative, which is not, uh, uh, we don't accept that. So that's, that cannot be the case for a joint probability mass function. So that means it cannot be joined for what? k greater than z. Okay, let us see if k less than zero, which means a negative. Can you see if a, k negative, this one will be negative? And this one will be negative, and this one will be negative, right? Okay, so if k is less than zero, then this, this, this are negative. So that means it cannot be a joint probability mass function. Okay, so the only choice left is what? k equals zero. If a equals zero, then can you see all these will be zeros? because they depend on k. All these four will be zeros. And these are originally zeros. So if you want to add all of them, what do you get? You will get zero. Okay, so if k is zero, the sum will be what? Zero. But we need for the joint probability mass function to be what? One. So that means the answer is that no. This function cannot be a joint probability mass function for any value of k. You need the values. The values of y are these, right? And as uh, we concluded from this one, the probabilities will be what? This one. So now, okay, I don't want to start today, so we can take uh, all a bit next time inshallah so let me summarize so uh, now in this lecture we've talked about joint distributions which means the case where a more than one random variable is defined over the same sample space or for a given random experiment okay so we want to study the behavior of these random variables as a joint behavior of these random variables so we said we are going to extend all what we've talked about in the univariate case to this case. For simplicity, as I said, we'll start with the bivariate case, which means two random variables. 
We started by defining the joint cumulative distribution, or in the case of two random variables, we can call it bivariate CDF. And we have seen that the definition is an extension for the univariate case. It is just the probability that x is less than or equal x and y less than or equal y. And this time it will be over the whole xy plane. For the univariate case, you have to get it over the whole real line here on the xy plane. Okay? And we have seen the corresponding probabilities of the joint CDF, which are also uh, analog for the properties in the univariate case. And then we define the joint probability mass function here, or the bivariate joint probability mass function. And again, we have seen that it's also an extension for the univariate case. It is a probability that x equals x and y equals y. Okay. And also we have the same probabilities that uh, uh, f evaluated at any pair of values for x and y has to be non-negative and the sum over all possible values of x and y in their domain is has to be 1. Okay. And then we have seen how can we get the marginal probability mass function if you know the joint. So if you want the marginal of x, you add the joint over y. If you want the marginal for y, you add the joint over x. Okay. Next time, inshallah, as this, uh, what we have on the screen, we will talk about conditional probability mass function. And what do we mean by conditional probability mass function? It means that we are going to fix one of the variables, and then we study the behavior of the other variable. For example, if you fix x at some value, and then you try to see what's the distribution of the random variable y. Okay. So I'll talk about this next time. I hope you understood what I said. Again, if you have any questions, please uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I'll see you next time, inshallah.